welcome back to Growing and Sewing. I am your host, Janelle Rivera. I am a bachelor's prepared nurse who recently left the bedside. And that's been a huge life transition for me. Um, I went off to become a, a bikini NPC athlete, so like a little bodybuilder. And I just wanted to document how I feel, what changed, what I do during this transition to help encourage somebody else. On this episode, I'll be talking about how God helped me to overcome some fears that actually helped me to quit my job and is still, he's still showing me ways that I can like be more brave or not let fear run me so much. And I just want to share that with you. But before I share those, I think it's like five pieces that I have for that five or six. I wanted to give some praise reports. Okay. So number one, if you heard in previous podcasts, so after quitting my bedside job, I did apply to a public health nurse position after um, like an eight day Sabbath and a trip to Colorado and um, just kind of paralyzed and wasn't moving too much. But I did end up applying for a public health nurse position and I am one of the top candidates for it. So uh, it's a little bittersweet. I don't know if I want it, but if it's his will and give it to me, I, it can be his will. And I'm just have to follow through with it. That's another episode for another day. It's like how I'm finding out what his will is when he's not like blaring speech in my ear. Um, a lot of Bible plans have went into that one. And I encourage you to find one too in the Bible app. It's, it's so insightful. Um, for those of you who don't know, I am like a six-year-old Christian. <laughs> I'm fairly new to the walk with Jesus and... Just most recently, I've started to feel more qualified to speak on my faith because um, I guess I felt like since I hadn't been in Sunday school, I didn't grow up in church or anything like that, that I, I didn't have what it takes. And there was a lot of jargon to get through. And I hadn't read the whole Bible. I was like, I'm going to wait till I read the whole Bible to tell people about Jesus. And that's not how it should be. As soon as I found out and had this fervor for Jesus, I should have shared it. But I was so focused on um, doing it right without him versus trying to do it at all with him. And now I'm I'm just counting the Holy Spirit. And I hope that I pray that anything you hear here is from the is Holy Spirit inspired and it touches your Holy Spirit. And if anything doesn't, that it falls off. If it's not of God, I want it to fall off your ears. I don't want it to mess with your life. Or your walk. And if you don't know Jesus, I highly encourage getting to know him. Just getting to know him is <laughs> more than enough. He's a very interesting man and God. <laughs> All right. Secondly, I am happy with my body again. So I had a bodybuilding competition May 28th. I was 102 pounds on stage. And it's been quite the adjustment going back to like 115, 116 pounds. My weight keeps going up as I build muscle. I'm looking to build muscle for my next show. But I just was not feeling like myself I don't know what part of me thought myself would be 102 all the time it's not healthy for me I'm 411 by the way and let's see three as my praise report things that were hard before are are getting to be a lot easier now that God is in the throne of which is what I want to talk about today um, how Jesus has helped me to overcome fears that were fueled by my need to to please people, not God. So, yeah, let's get into how Jesus has just helped me in conquering fear. So, the first thing was seeking out what he had to say about it. So, even before I quit my job at the bedside, one of the scriptures that stood out to me was Galatians 1.10, which I'll just go ahead and read. For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please, please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. And, and that is so cool, easy to read, and applicable to this day. Something written years ago. For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I seeking to please man? If I were still trying to please man, this is very clear, I would not be a servant of Christ. So automatically I was convicted when I read that. I was like, oh. I say it all the time. I am totally a people pleaser. I came across that scripture while um, 
debating whether or not to quit the bedside because one of my reasons to stay had a lot to do with what people thought of me. Whether I was a quitter, whether I was strong enough, hardworking enough, um, whether I was apt to be a nurse. Um, and the list just went on. And it always had to do with people's opinions. Like I served and strived for their good opinion of me. Mind you, um, I wasn't thinking about what my Heavenly Father thinks about me. And I was I was going to let the opinion of man, the opinion of man, which no man, nobody has even, even said those mean things to me. So all these things were coming, all these descriptors of myself, these negative descriptors of myself were coming from my head. I don't remember anybody ever saying I wasn't hardworking or that I wasn't strong enough or that I was a quitter. I just felt like man would see me that way. And I, I don't know why I was folding under that opinion of man. But now I do. I, I put them in a place where God should have been. I need to be seeking for his approval. And once I sought out for his approval, the decision became a lot easier. Um, yeah, man's approval mattered more than God's did back then. And I didn't, I didn't understand it because I, I had a good paying noble and respect, respectable job as a nurse. I was proud of what I did. But as I read the Bible, which I encourage everyone who's looking to hear from God to, to do, I'm noticing that God is really good at humbling the proud and exalting the humble who know that, I mean, they are enough because they're God's. They are God's children. And, and they do what... God wills of them. So that was the first thing that helped me with fear is just meditating on that scripture about how if I'm out here trying to please man, then I'm no servant of Christ. Secondly, yeah, y'all, I had to write this down because <laughs> my brain wouldn't just remember all of it. I've been keeping them in notes for like months now. And the second thing that helped me is thinking about who am I scared of? If they don't govern your life, why do you fear them? I'm not saying and not to submit to authority that God placed over you, but don't fear them more than you fear God. Yes, actually, if I could turn to another scripture, Romans 13, 1 says, yeah, Romans 13, 1 says, let every person be subject to their governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. So, I was having a really hard time with that because when I thought of Daniel and, like, his friends, they respected King Nebuchadnezzar, but they did not obey him when it meant disobeying God. And so that's what I mean when I'm saying, who am I scared of? Because if they don't, if they don't govern my life, why do I fear them more than I fear God? That helped me a lot through um, working through fear. I had to realize that I was more scared of a supervisor or an employer or manager than I was of God. Like I was probably going to be willing to disobey God and the good things that he has for me just to please and obey this authority. Because I thought, you know, they govern my money, they govern my life, they govern this job. And that's not so. God put them there help me kind of take care of me um to have authority over me i'm to respect them and submit to them but by no means should i be disobeying god in order to please that person okay and then third when i came across the stark realization that no matter what i do i will be met with criticism whether i stay in my comfy box or i step out of it whether i'm a nurse or not whether I seek to do God's will or not, whether I believe in Christ or not, I will be met with scrutiny. I will be disagreed with. So why not live in the way that I believe leads to true life? And, and to me, that is through the free gift that God gave us through Jesus Christ. Fourth, uh, I was realizing that I was never meant to have all the answers. So why be scared that I may not know something? Again, that's why 
I worried so much about having all the answers if I wasn't meant to know everything. And it's probably better that way. Because what good would it be for me, a mere sinful, flawed, mortal being? I mean, y'all see other people hurt you, and you know that you probably have hurt somebody else. Why would you want you to know everything? I would have ruined my life if I if I knew and had a step-by-step guide of everything I needed to do with my life. Because if I saw the things that it would take until the end of my life, like the things that would happen, I'd probably want to change things to be absolutely perfect, and they're just not perfect. And I would, I would ruin his will. Or <laughs> like I tell my sister sometimes, like when you get angry or you want to, you know, fight somebody, whose hands are the better hands? My hands or God's hands? Like who's better at delivering justice? My hands or his hands? It's probably going to be the perfect guy, the omnipotent guy, the guy that knows or the deity that knows. So similarly, just acknowledging that I... I don't have all the answers. Okay. And then last but not least, I think it's going to be a rather quick podcast. See, I'm glad I wrote these things down so I'm not wasting your time. All right. But if you like being here, wasting time with me, just conversating, that's cool too. I like that. So last but not least, an actual piece of encouragement I received from my friends, Abigail and Shekinah. When I was, I was talking to them about how hard it is to get out of my box and 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 be a Christian in this whole in this climate or this culture because of all you know cancel culture or you know you're not being as open minded as the culture that is now and they had told me straight up like what good is it for you to be accepted by the world if you're canceled or denied in front of the heavenly father because you rejected or didn't stand up for Jesus' name while you were here. And I was like, ooh, oh, that's not good. That's no bueno. You're right. Y'all, y'all right. Oh, that would probably help with uh, conquering fear too is having a community of Christians praying for you um, and just feeding into you, pouring to your spirit and vice versa because that was a wake-up call for me. And I hope it is for somebody else out there fighting to swim against the current uh, as a Christian. Because as I'm getting into this book, I'm noticing it's always kind of a going against the current. Always having to fight for it, argue for it, provide evidence again and again. Like, I've been watching The Chosen. It was crazy to me that um, Jesus' disciples seen Jesus in action, doing these miracles, saying these things, realizing, saying and stating he is the son of man. He's the Messiah. And still having fear, still having questions, still doubting Jesus, still doubting God. Right before their eyes, they're seeing this man do the things that he does. And so that just goes to show that, you know, everybody asks for, oh, why doesn't he do this? Why doesn't God do this? Why doesn't he do more miracles? Why doesn't, why isn't everything perfect? Which is another thing. If everything was perfect here on earth, we would never want to leave earth. Earth would be like heaven. Um, but that's been wild to me. So I just want to remind you for the newer Christians out there like me, that you are qualified because of your relationship with Jesus. And that even if you didn't grow up in the church, it's not too late to get to know him, God and his word, that there are many like you and me who have a fervor to share what he's done for you. But we're scared because We don't want to make a mistake, which is understandable, but that's not something that we need to worry about because Jesus is really, he did all the work and God can make something good out of something bad. So sometimes you might even slip up and it's like, oh my goodness, I, I was, I didn't say the right thing, like the thing because you're down yourself or whatever, but he, he's too good for you to mess up. There's people spitting all over his name and he can still make good out of that thing. So if you are really from your heart trying to share this word in your most earnest ways, he's going to see through to it, okay? Just sow that seed. Somebody come along, water it. Maybe you're the one to water it. And it'll work, okay? And these are just a couple of ways to fight that fear that you might have. Um, I guess just to recap, knowing that if you are out here to please man, that's not serving Christ, Okay? Knowing that um, maybe to be canceled by culture 
is to be accepted by Christ. Okay? Don't deny his name. If you really believe him, don't deny his name. Why would you deny his name? Um, secondly, thinking about who are you scared of? Are you scared of man or do you fear God? Who do you fear more? Um, knowing that whatever you do, whether it's you're right or you're wrong, you're going to be criticized. So why not do that thing that you believe leads to true life? That you believe is true love. Stand up for that. Um, and never, oh my goodness, what was the fourth one? Knowing that you were never meant to have all the answers. You might be scared of what you're going to do next, what the next move is. You might want the answer. You might want to really direct. Don't be scared of not knowing the answers. Okay? We weren't meant to know everything. But somebody greater does know everything. Okay? And you just need to submit to him, go to him, ask him about it, tell him about it, tell him about your worries. All of that. I hope that this brings someone the encouragement that, they're, that they need to go through the fight against the spirit of fear. Because um, I do believe that testimonies are strong. And this is just a small piece of mine and how I've, I've just conquered that fear of sharing the good news that is Jesus. And I encourage you, if you haven't already, to pray about that fear. Testimony is great. Listening to advice is great. Being scripture is amazing, but being in a relationship with God is greater. Tell him about it. He wants to hear. There's, and another thing <laughs> that I learned with praying is sometimes we hold back like the yelling and questions and crying and being mad with God, but he likes that. Like he's really, he wants to see how passionate you are about expressing yourself to him. I don't, I'm not saying calling bad names and stuff, but Tell him, like, God, why would you do this? Why would you put me in this predicament? Why would you say that I could do this if it's not, that door's not going to open? Why do I feel more conflicted being with you than it was without you? You know, ask him the hard questions. It's awesome. Tell God about your fears. Don't be scared that he will, he'll think you lack faith. Show him that you are willing to trust him in building up your faith. Give it to God. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week that you've conquered fear with God. And I just want to thank you for listening.